BS Free Witchcraft is a production of the Nerd and Tie Podcast Network. Nerd and Tie produces podcasts ranging from actual play to true crime, and you can find more at nerdandtie.com or join our Discord by going to nerdandtie.com slash Discord. Welcome to BS Free Witchcraft, your monthly guide to the modern witchcraft movement minus a lot of the usual, well... Bullshit. I'm your host, Trey Dorn, and, uh, oh my god, guys, it's September. Isn't it? That's just the neatest. It's, sorry, I, this is my favorite time of year. I love September. I love September, October, November. I like the fall is the best. I know I'm recording this. It's technically still summer, but I'm in northern Wisconsin. It's fall the moment you hit September. <laughs> like, literally, the temperature dropped like 10 degrees here within the first week of September. It was, it was impressive. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, the, the, the podcast also turns two years old with this episode. So, uh, happy birthday to the podcast. It's I mean, happy birthday to me. I just turned 40 a few weeks ago. I'm old. I am ancient. My bones are turning to dust and I decided this month I wanted to talk about something a little bit more positive than, say, well, I mean, last month wasn't necessarily negative, but it was dealing with the uh, cold, harsh realities of the current age of 2020 when I recorded these episodes. And uh, this episode, we're going to talk about something that 2020 has unfortunately canceled for the most part. Uh, and that is, uh, Pagan Pride Days. I'm talking about Pagan Pride. And I know this is a witchcraft show, and paganism and witchcraft, while they largely overlap, there is areas where they don't. Like, I'm sure the, I'm sure non-pagan secular witches are probably rolling, like, maybe a little bored with this. Um, but we're going to talk about it anyways, because... The, the modern witchcraft movement and the neo-pagan movement are so interlinked to such a high degree for so much of their history that while these groups are drifting apart now a bit, uh, historically they've been roughly the same group of people. So we're still going to talk about this in this episode because I feel like it and I think it's important. Because, you know, it's my show. <laughs> it's like I can talk about stuff if I want to talk about stuff. And I want to talk about Pagan Pride Days because a lot of the, the modern witchcraft movement is so disparate. Like, we are... Like, the big boom in the modern witchcraft movement, which, like, was huge in the 90s, was the, um, was the massive boom in self-taught um, practitioners, solitary practitioners, and people who came up through books and then, like, uh, ended up practicing on their own and weren't part of the existing, like, coven system that flourished in the 60s and 70s. Like, the reason why the modern witchcraft movement got huge and is, you know, the size that it is today is entirely to do with the fact that so many people taught themselves how to do this at home alone but that creates an issue um, if the majority of people practicing witchcraft are doing it alone and at home they don't have as much of a connection and while the internet is great and don't get me wrong I'm a big fan of the internet hence why I do this show on the internet, those kinds of connections, while great, aren't as nice as in-person connections as we're all figuring out this year. <laughs> so, um, and for the same reason why I, I'm, I'm a nerd and I came up um, through the convention scene, view conventions is really important for geek culture. I think Pagan Pride Day has is one of the ways that we can have real in-person communication with other witches and real contact with other witches in the real world. 
And so, yes, it is It is a pagan event. And I know not every witch is a pagan. But most of us are. And if you're not, it's still some fun you can learn about. You know, that's that's the thing on this show. If we're talking about something you don't personally do, that's fine. Learn. Have a lesson. And the worst case scenario is that uh, you walk away learning about a corner that you don't engage in. That's like I we have listeners who don't do candle magic, and I did a whole episode on candles. We're probably down the line going to do a whole episode on crystals. And I know a lot of witches who don't do anything with that. But also, trust me, that's going to be a good episode when we get to that. Um, I say promising. Like, even though like I haven't promised like three episodes that I still haven't made yet. Um, <laughs> so what is Pagan Pride Day? What is Pagan Pride Day? Well, Pagan Pride Day is... A number of events that are run independently because, you know, we're witches. We don't answer well to central authority or pagans. And also, pagans don't answer well to central authority. It's almost like we all went looking outside the mainstream for some reason. <laughs> um, Pagan Pride, it's a series of independent events uh, that are run a, a, around the world. Um, there is a central organization called the Pagan Pride Project, but they, they don't, like, run them. They are more of a networking organization where they, they allow people to connect for resources and promotion and things like that. So um, it's a series of events that are run around the world to promote positive... Well, it's... On the one hand, it's like promote a positive image of, of the neo-pagan movement and the modern witchcraft movement, but it's also um, to create a, a place of community and gathering for people in the movement. Uh, some of these events are as simple as like a picnic or like just like a day in the park with a bunch of other pagans and witches. Um, some events are full-sized festivals with uh, food and concerts and, and all that sort of thing. So it's... There's a, a wide array of events that fall under the, the category of, of Pagan Pride Day. The term Pagan Pride, no one's really sure where it started getting used. Uh, the Pagan Pride Project um, claims it goes as early as 1992. Um, there were rumors of single events. We know that it does come as a reference to um, uh, the, the Gay Pride and the Queer Pride movement. Um, from the LGBTQ community. And there's there's obviously quite a bit of overlap between the two catalogs of people. The number of... Yeah, it's I, I know very few non-queer witches. I know, I know non-queer witches. Yeah, I do. Um, but... <laughs> they're the minority and um yeah so it's 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 think of it as like a an event that is run and uh people go there sometimes there are workshops sometimes there are speakers um so the the things that you will always find there is there is a degree to try to educate the public about um about different neo-pagan traditions because the, these events are open to the general public. Um, the other thing is often many of these groups will be working with a, a charity of some sort, do some sort of charity fundraising and or donations raised by the event. Um, and the, the charities that you see are the ones you usually would expect to associate with pagan pride events, be it, you know, animal welfare or environmental causes or, you know. But they're not just, you know, it's like pretty much any charity that you think is probably a good idea. Probably one of these events is sponsored. And yeah, it's and again, these are these are open to the public. These are usually events where non-witches are invited 
to attend, and non-witches are invited to show up. And I should say non-pagans. Yeah, it's this is the thing. It's this is the thing. <laughs> the problem with being a witch from the '90s is that I have a habit of, like, my brain conflates neo-paganism and witchcraft, which it shouldn't, man. It shouldn't. I know these are separate groups. There is a stark difference. But, yeah. I keep slipping, man. I just keep slipping. I'm old. My brain is addled. And, yeah. But, that's kind of a brief overview. Let's... Now, obviously, again, everything's canceled this year. No one's holding a Pagan Pride Day event. If you are, I'll kick your ass. I'm just saying. But we don't need to talk to just me about this. That'd be boring. Let's, let's, let's talk to others. This is the most awkward transition to... A part of the show I recorded at another time. And now I'm just going to slide it in. I was going to try to be smooth and make it sound like this one continuous thing ahead of time. But I don't... I don't... I don't have that. <laughs> now we're going to go to something I recorded weeks ago. Right now we're going to bring Amanda Tomasini onto the show. And um, Amanda... What is your background with Pagan Pride Day? Um, so I started with Pagan Pride Day um, about eight years ago um, here in central Illinois. It was in its fifth year, um, and it had originally been founded by a woman that goes by the name of Hedgehog. Um <laughs> That's her pagan name, and that's, so that's the name that's I'll not, use for her. That's not the weirdest name I've heard people use, so I'm oh, fine. That's no, actually not at cute. All. <laughs> it, it, it's adorable because she's very small and very spiky, so it's perfect oh, for her. It's yes, but it's the kind of name that you can't help but laugh when you hear it, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so she she founded Pagan Pride Day here in Central Illinois, um, and she was also running a group called Pagans in Touch at the time, um, which she had started several years prior back in Maryland and then brought over um, when she moved to central Illinois. So I actually went to the Pagans in Touch meeting where they were kind of prepping for for Pagan Pride Day um, and, and really just got kind of voluntold <laughs> um, right away. <laughs> they needed people to help. Um, and I was like, sure, I'll, I'll help out and had no idea what I was getting myself into. But um, it's been a fantastic journey. Um, a couple of years later, I actually ended up in the um, that co-organizer uh, role because um, she had stepped down at that point. Um, and just stepped down from it last year. So it, it's been a journey. <laughs> That's all right. So obviously, no one's going to a pagan pride day this year because, right? You know, it's for those of you who are binging this episode three years from now because that is a thing that happens with this show. Uh, it's 2020, all it's yeah. just, it, it's I, I in, in, the, in the early episodes in the pandemic, I used to explain the pandemic more, thinking it was going to be over fast. But now I'm just going to say this this is this episode's in 2020, it's just <laughs> you can you can just figure it out. Um, but for someone who like hasn't been to a pagan pride day, um, if one was happening in the, in the utopian future in which these sorts of events are allowed to occur again, like what kind what, 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 what would one expect arriving at one? So I, obviously everyone is going to be a little bit different, right, yeah. um, because we do have that kind of leeway, um, but typically you're you're definitely going to have some sort of public ritual that's going to be available for either participating in or viewing. Um, you're going to have workshops. Um, and for us, we tended to try to go everything from like a pagan 101 all the way up to something that 
somebody that's been pagan for 20 years might actually be interested in sitting and taking time and listening to. Um, we tried to have some type of live entertainment, um, whether it was belly dancers or pagan musician or something like that. Um, we typically had a ven- uh, vendor's row type of area. Um, not Pagan Pride Day is not required to have vendors. Yeah. But it, it, but it does tend to, you know, bring in a lot of the, the funds that are required to have an event like that. Um, <laughs> the other thing we would typically have is some type of raffle also to help with the fundraising aspect. Um, so those are the typical things that we would have. Um, a, a kind of interspersed there, we would have... Um, Occasionally, we had a meditation labyrinth or a meditation area. Um, we had a tools of the trade display at our particular location, and I, that was something that was unique to ours, um, where people could see the yeah. tools of witchcraft and and not just Wicca, but Asa True and Druidism and yeah. all sorts of other, you know, everything that falls under that pagan umbrella. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's always like it's it's always difficult because like the the modern witchcraft movement and the pagan the neo pagan movement are there's a huge overlap between these two groups but it's not a 100% overlap there are plenty of you know pagan groups who don't practice any sort of thing that would be referred to as witchcraft and then there are obviously you know witchcraft traditions that fall outside of the neo pagan banner so right. it's like it's 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 always like it's it's so difficult to like pin down like any sort of uh, real world event though for 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 a lot of uh, for a lot of so I'm, obviously I'm going to clean that up in the edit or I won't and I'll just sound <laughs> dumb in the podcast which would not be unlike me uh, but like there's so much so much of the 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 community though. Um, especially since the 90s with uh, the explosion of solitary practitioners, especially in, in Wicca. Uh, but it just in, in witchcraft in general, um, a lot of stuff is like a lot of people find these things through books and they end up, you know, practicing alone outside of groups. And so, right. like, I think that the, the Pagan Pride Day is like, while it's not witchcraft specific, obviously it's, you know, for, it's a neo-pagan event because there's so much overlap. I think that there's kind of an, an important community aspect for oh. a, a real world community uh, for this sort of event. It's, I mean, because outside of the towns that happen to have witch shops, which most don't. <laughs> right. It's, yeah. It may be the 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 only way to like have a real in person connection with other people in the community, mm-hmm. you know. It's and I, I I don't know what are your what are your thoughts on the 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 community aspect and how the the importance of it. Yeah, I mean, our our technical mission was to promote education and understanding within the local community. Um, you know, reaching out to the community. So you know, part of it is that we want people who aren't pagan to kind of understand a little bit more what we do and who we are. Like, we're not just these teenagers that are running (laughs) around, you know, breaking into cemeteries or whatever, trying to commune with ghosts. You know, we're... I mean, to be fair, some of of us... Some of are we might and, have done that, you know, and, twenty years ago. And some of some of us did that stuff. And I know for a fact people in their thirties and forties who are still doing that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's... but at at the same time, like you know, we're we're medical professionals, we're lawyers. Yeah. You know, we we work in offices. We're you know not totally abnormal people and um it's just an opportunity for the greater community to learn but also there's that you know for the solitary practitioner you know there's a difference between reading a book and gaining that information and then actually doing it yeah and you have that opportunity to possibly actually do it and feel it and experience it um, and then networking with other people, whether it's, 
joining a coven or whether it's just you have somebody to talk to and say, hey, I had this really weird experience. You know, can you help me with it? Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's I don't even ever think about the uh, the people from outside of the <laughs> craft community. It's you know, I used to be I used to be pretty stealth. I used to look pretty normal, and then a few years ago, I just was like, screw it, I'm just going full weird. I don't care. Yeah. I've been, I've been working at home for over a, like I've been working at home since 2010. Who cares? Um, <laughs> I'm 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 very strange, but. I, I will admit, for a good chunk of my adult life, I would have just been a normal person working in an insurance company's office. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, I, I personally know people who have performed witchcraft at, uh, um, high levels of the government, technically, and so do you. Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm related to one. Um... <laughs> But yeah, it's yeah. I think I do. I do think it's important that we that we get a little bit normalized in front of other people. I you know it's we've we've been pitching the narrative that that witch, witches and pagans are everywhere and we look like everybody else for a very long time, and it's super true. It is like you know I know plenty of people who who blend in and look pretty normal, but the funniest thing to me is that it's the Usually, though, the people saying that most witches look like ordinary people and would completely blend in are always the weirdest looking motherfuckers uh, right. who are saying those words. <laughs> I um, mean, yeah, I'm sitting here with purple hair and my head, sh you know, the sides of my hair head shaved. So, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Me, me exiting the house without a long flowing drape cardigan is highly unlikely. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know... Um, whatever, you know. Yeah, but, you know, I know folks that work at university and have to look business oh, yeah. professional, Absolutely. you know, 100% of the time. So. Absolutely. Well, the funniest thing is when I started this podcast, um, the number of people on my Facebook friends list who I had no idea were also witches <laughs> telling me that they were witches just surprised the heck out of me. Mm-hmm. Because there were so many people who I just had no idea like, yeah. were out there practicing witchcraft. Like I knew I, I I knew you were, but like um there are like a bunch of people who like I had met from like because it was all from like circumstances that like you know, because like I help run an anime convention and I've been doing that right. for, you know, since the early two thousands. Um, which by the way, when you were talking about like all the planning with the stuff of the organization i was like okay yeah no it's it's pretty much a convention where you can't rely on attendees for income um yes <laughs> that's, that's the structure <laughs> um uh but like so i know all these people from all these other like you know kind of contexts and then finding out the number of them that were also witches was both you know shocking and hilarious right <laughs> <laughs> but also the people who are like, I had no idea you were a witch tray. I'm like, really? <laughs> how? Well, I, how? <laughs> I, I had no idea until I saw it come up some point in my Facebook feed. I really? Mean, yeah. <laughs> I was... Which, I mean, kind of blows my mind because I think I, I was like 15 when I started practicing. Right. So I and I was pretty open about it back way back then i don't think i realized back in the high school that you were a witch oh yeah no i don't i don't think oh. I, I, I knew a bunch of other people who were right <laughs> <laughs> some of which are not anymore no one of them became right. a christian minister that was weird <laughs> yeah that's that's always yeah that's that was weird. a trip <laughs> I'm like, it's like, no, there, there's like no shame in anything. And it's nothing wrong with it. It's just such a directional change. Right. But yeah. But yeah, no, it's, uh, well, thank you so much for sitting down and talking with me about this. Absolutely. Thing. 
thank you guys for sticking with us for another month. And uh, yeah, no. So remember that this show is made possible by uh, listeners like you and their support through Patreon. And uh, the Patreon for the show is patreon.com slash Tregorn. That's patreon.com slash T-R-A-E-G-O-R-N. And by supporting the show on Patreon, you get access to these episodes um, up to a week early. So you can hear the new episode before anybody else. And I'd like to give um, a shout out to some of the patrons. Um, So Lindsay Dosey. Bruce Norville and Meg Ten Halsen. And if you can't support us on Patreon because, you know, the the economics are rough and I am aware of 2020, consider sharing the show with your friends. Tell them about it. Force them to listen to it. Like tie them to a chair, hit put the headphones on their head, hit play on the podcast and then stare them right in the eyes as you make them listen to this. That'll or just, you know, like post it to your social media or something i guess if you want to follow the show on social media by the way on twitter you can find me um at t-r-a-e-g-o-r-n i'm on tumblr at uh, t-r-a-e-g-o-r-n dot tumblr dot com and you can always um like the show on facebook at facebook.com slash bs free witchcraft it's fun and exciting and remember we do have uh Magicians merch and uh, Brick in Our Hands merch available at bsforwitchcraft.com and there's a little merch button and you know bsforwitchcraft.com is where you can always find stuff on the show or you can find us also at our Nerd and Tie page at nerdandtie.com slash bsfreewitchcraft because we are a part of the Nerd and Tie network as I you know as we mentioned at the top of the show and there's there are a bunch of other really great shows on the Nerd and Tie network you know I, I, I talk about Hex Positive a lot, which is a great show, you know, nerdandtie.com slash Hex. And they're great. And, you know, Let's Be Legendary is great. Um, nerdandtie.com slash Legendary, which is a great actual play show. I'm on Stormwood and Associates uh, at nerdandtie.com slash Stormwood, which is a, an actual play show also. And, you know, there's the main Nerd and Tie Cop podcast where you can hear me and some other people talk about geek and convention news every month but you know and and cool and unusual punishment's great <laughs> like uh, the true crime podcast but i'll give enough love to famicom dojo um the retro video gaming podcast on the network and so uh, famicom dojo is is just great guys it's sean and vink going into the world of retro video gaming every month and it's just, it's a great podcast, and you should listen to it. Or just go, you know, also you should watch the Nikazumi show on YouTube. That's also on um, Nerd Tie Network is just full of really good programs, guys. Just good stuff run by good people. And you know what? If you want to talk to us, like if you want to talk to me on a daily basis, because there are people who do, uh, join our Discord, man. It's, join our Discord. It's pretty great. At, and you can find an invite for that at nerdandtie.com slash discord. And there you can you can find me, you can find uh, Brina Garen of Hex Positive just chatting every single day. That's what we do in our spare time, man. And uh, I keep saying man. What is what's up with me? I don't know. I think I think that's a sign that, that, that I should end the show. Right? That's that's probably a good idea. Yeah, we're going to run away. You guys have a great, a great month, and I will talk to all of you magicians again next month.